Hello, I'm Ben Davis and welcome to this Lightroom tutorial where I'm going to show you how to take artistic control of your colours. The image I'm working with today is a night shot of Paris and I want to make two colours dominate the scene, blue and yellow. These two are actually opposite on the colour wheel, which means aesthetically they complement one another. By enhancing these two colours and restricting all others, it's easy to give an artistic twist to your image. To begin, you'll need to import a file into Lightroom. You can do that by pressing Ctrl, Shift and I on the keyboard, or by popping over here on the left in the library module, clicking on the Import button and navigating to the folder where your file is kept. Mine is in the Start Images folder and I want Paris.dng. Make sure it's ticked and then click Import. As soon as it's in, just select the file and then click on Develop to enter the developing module. The first thing I want to do in here is uh, visit the Lens Corrections tab and that's going to allow me to fix any distortion present within the image. So just click over to Basic within the Lens Corrections tab and just tick Enable Profile Corrections and Remove Chromatic Aberration. Then below we have the Upright Controls which fixes any perspective issues and I'm just going to click on Auto just to straighten up our lines. Then head over to Profile and just make sure that under Lens Profile you have the correct lens selected. Mine was shot with the Nikon 24-70. If you're using your own image, this information will be different. Usually Lightroom does a really good job of detecting the lens that was used for the image from the metadata in the file. If it's not there, you can select it from these drop-down menus. With that done, the next thing I want to do is restrict the colours in the image. So if you scroll up to the HSL colour black and white, click on colour uh, and then click on all to open this up. And if you scroll down, we have all of these eight different colour channels and the controls for the hue, the saturation and the luminance. I'm going to start off with the red. I'm going to take the saturation all the way out and the orange. I'll leave the yellow alone for a second. The green, take the saturation out as well as the aqua leave the blue alone, take out the purple and the magenta. If I go back up to the yellow, which I left alone, I actually want to increase the saturation of this one rather than taking it to minus 100 like all the others. I'm going to give this a boost, so I'm going to set this to round about plus 40, somewhere like that. And I'm also going to make the yellow brighter. So I'm going to do that with the luminance, and I'm going to take this one to the right as well. And I'm going to set luminance to round about plus 30. If you scroll down to the blue channel here, same with the saturation, I'm going to increase this as well. So once again, I'm going to push this to the right and set this to round about plus 40. And for the luminance, I want to make the blues darker in this image. So I'm going to take this one to the left and set this at minus 30. With that done, scroll up to the basic tab and here you can set all of the tones and contrast for the image. So if you just pop this one open here, I'm going to start off with the contrast slider. I'm going to set this to round about plus 25 just to give that a bit of a boost. Next up we have the highlights. I'm going to take this to minus 100 to bring out the most detail I can in the brightest parts of the picture. And then with the shadows, I'll set this to plus 100 to lift all of the detail in the darkest parts of the image. Down below we have the whites and the black slider. If you hold down Alt on the keyboard as you move these sliders, you get a clipping mask and that's show you where the whites and the blacks are clipping and losing detail. So with my finger pressed on the Alt key, I'm going to start moving the whites slider. I'm going to take it to the right and I'm going to push it quite high and set it somewhere around about plus 65 or so, just as those colours are starting to clip through. If I press Alt again and go back to the slider, you can see here we have those little points of light poking through and that's showing us where white is clipping. It's fine just to have a little bit for this image just so we get a, a nice bright white point. And then with the blacks, I'm going to hold down the Alt key again and take this one to the left and I can have it a little bit more in those sort of really dark shadow areas and leave it set round about there, around about roughly minus 20, something like that, just to give those a bit more depth to the darks. The other thing I want to do here in the basic tab at the minute is the clarity slider. And I'm going to take that down to around about minus 25 just to soften the image a little bit. If we took the slider the other way into the positive values, it adds more of a, a gritty finish to the image. But I want to keep this one nice and, uh, and soft to reflect the night. With that done, the next thing I want to do is go to the tone curve tab, which is the next one down. And this allows you to adjust the contrast and also some of the color channels in the image. 
If it looks like this with these sliders, you want to click on this little icon here and this allows you to manually edit this point curve. I'm going to start off with channel set to RGB from the drop down menu. And then the first thing I want to do is click here to add a control point there where these two first sort of quarter lines cross here in the shadows. And that's going to anchor my tones there. And then I'm going to get hold of the very far left of the line, which represents pure black and lift it up about halfway to this first quarter line there and that's just going to lift all of my blacks in the image uh, so i am not got a pure black there. The next thing to do is change the channel from RGB to blue and I want to boost the blues in the darker parts of the image so I'm going to do that by getting hold of this left hand edge of the tone curve here and lifting it up again perhaps about halfway uh, just under to that first quarter line, I'm going to do the opposite at the other end and that's going to take blue out of the brighter parts and when I take blue out, the opposite of that is yellow, so that's what we're left with. So we're actually going to be boosting the yellow in those brighter parts and I'm going to leave this tone curve set like that, I'm not going to touch the other channels and if I just toggle this on and off here, you can see the effect that the tone curve has had and it's already given a big boost to our blues in the image and lifted those very black points to get a bit of extra soft detail in there. So next up, I want to use these split toning tools to really enhance this color palette that we're working with here, the blue and the yellow. So if you scroll down to split toning, open that one up. We're going to start off with the highlights. Uh, if you click on this little window here, this brings up the color palette and you've got this uh, color picker here. I'm going to pick something in round about here so between the yellow and the orange, a nice warm color. I'm going to perhaps somewhere round about there, 54, 50, 52, something like that. And the saturation, you can either bring it down here to decrease the saturation or with this slider here. I'm going to leave it set round about 50. And if you just click off there, and again, you can also adjust it with this hue slider here and with this saturation slider as well. Below, we can choose a color for the shadows and we're going to go for a blue. So once again, you can click on this little window here and then pick a blue somewhere in there, something like that. We've got too, that's perhaps a little bit too purpley, so let's take it down a bit, somewhere around about 215, a bit more tearly, something like that. And again, the saturation, I'm going to set this equally at around about 50%. So if you just click off here. With that done, I want to control the balance between the highlights and the shadows. And looking at this image, I can see there's a lot more blue in this, and I could really bring yellow more to the fore. So I am going to take this balance slider to the right, which is more towards the highlights, and I'm going to keep pushing it until I'm happy. And somewhere around about there, plus 75, you can see we've really got a nice sort of yellow glow coming through this picture but still kept a nice cool blue in these darker shadows. Now then, we've got the nice yellow and blue here over the city, but the sky is a bit of a, a magentary colour, and I'm going to fix that using a graduated filter. So if you click on the graduated filter here in the toolbar, or press M for a shortcut, let's pop that one open there. Here we have all these new sliders open up, and I want to set the temperature more towards the blue for this graduated filter. So I'm going to take this to the left, to around about minus 45, and also I want to darken the sky a little bit as well. So I'm going to take the exposure down slightly, to around about minus minus 0.3. Okay, so if you just click and drag your mouse over the sky there, you can see we've got these three lines opening up. Now, if you hold down the shift key on the keyboard, that's going to keep these lines straight with the top of the frame. So I'm going to do that, just click and pull down, get a nice sort of fairly wide feather area. I'll pull that down there, somewhere around about there. Uh, I'm actually going to add a second graduated filter with these same effects again. So I'm just going to click once more towards the top of the image and pull down just so I've got that feather area. I'm going to hold down shift again, just to keep it nice and straight. And then if I want to adjust this, I can click hold of this pin and move it down just to get a nice or dark inky blue sky there, somewhere like that. And once you're happy with where this is positioned, you can just click done to exit the tool. Now the way that I did that, I kept it, I pulled it in nice to get a nice little dark sky, but I didn't go all the way over the horizon line in the city because I wanted to keep this kind of glow which shows the sort of city lights glowing into the night sky. If I'd have taken the graduated filter much further down, we'd have lost quite a bit of that effect. You can see there, because that's why I positioned it up there, just to give that nice sort of nighttime city effect. Okay, once again, just click done to exit this tool. Uh, now I'm looking at this image, I actually think perhaps if we go back and revisit the white balance sliders up in the basic tab, we might be able to get something else out of this image. Here we have the temperature slider controlling from more cooler in the blue to the warm yellow. I want to set this somewhere perhaps a little bit warmer than what I had it. So round about 3600, 37, something like that. Just a little bit more warmth here in this picture. 
or you can always enter it manually by clicking in here and simply typing in the value. Now I'm going to go for something just like a 3695, something like that, and just press enter and your slider will be set. Now the tint, I want to perhaps reduce this as well. You can take it more towards the green or towards the magenta. I'm going to leave this set around about plus 12, something like that. Something in there just to take out a little bit of that magenta. Okay, with that done, one of the last things I want to do to this image is add some sharpening. So if you scroll down to the Detail tab and open that one up, here we have the uh, zoom area where you can see the effect of sharpening that's happening with a bit more detail. You can click on this Target tool and then select somewhere of the image that you'd like to have to have a good view of what's going on. I'm just going to select this uh, window here because I've got a good bit of shadow here to see the noise and also some detail for the sharpening effect. I'm going to start off with the amount slider and set this one to about 80 just to add a quite a nice bit of sharpening to the image. Radius and detail I'm going to leave in the default positions. The last one though is one of the most important ones and that's the masking slider and this controls where sharpening is applied in the image. You don't want to apply sharpening all over to areas which don't have any edges or detail because if you do add sharpening there you're going to start increasing image artifacts and reducing image quality. So once again if you hold down alt on the keyboard as you move this masking slider you'll get an edge mask and that shows you where it's being sharpened. The black areas aren't, the white areas are. So if you push this to the right I'm going to leave this set somewhere round about here about 70 just so these stronger edges are showing through. You can also see here in my uh, window that I selected that so just the stronger edges of the window frame are coming through so we're not sharpening all these other bits. Below here we have the noise reduction sliders and the luminance slider controls the appearance of sort of fine grain in the image. There isn't much because this was shot with an ISO of 50 which is really low but I'm still going to increase this ever so slightly to around about 15 just to smooth out any grain that is here in the image that I might have added as well as I've been moving some of these sliders. And with that set we're about finished. I just want to take a look at this image one more time and see if there's anything else I can do to improve it before I export it because then the settings are locked in as my JPEG finished version. I actually think I could brighten this picture a little bit. Looking at the histogram here, it's pretty dark. So if you scroll up to the basic tab, I'm going to move the exposure slider. I'm going to increase the exposure by a little bit to around about plus 0.5, something like that, just to brighten up the whole scene, just to give the, the city lights more impact. With that done, I'm now satisfied. So I'm going to export the image. To do that, you can click File, Export, and up will open this window here. You First of all, you need to choose a location for where the new image you are creating will be saved. Currently, it's set to the desktop, and I'm happy with that. You can choose and navigate somewhere else if you want. I'm going to give this a custom name, so let's just call this Paris Night. In here, you can give it other naming options, but I just want to give it a custom name so I can easily identify it when I can see it in a list of files. Below here we have image format. I'm going to leave it set to JPEG as that's the best settings um, for more sort of universal use. And then also I'm going to go down to the image quality and reduce this to around about 80 something like that or thereabouts just to save a little bit of file space. And then here we have image sizing. I'm going to resize to fit. I want to just go for long edge. So the longest edge is going to be 4,000 pixels. You don't have to do this on yours, but I want to do that just so I've got quite a big file that I can use lots of places, whether I want to put it, a huge file online or perhaps even make a print, something like that. And then also I'm going to increase the resolution from 240 to 320. With that done, all you need to do is then click export. This new file will then be created on your desktop. I just want to show you the journey that we've had with this image from the start to where we've ended up. If you press the backslash key on the keyboard, this shows you a before. This is the untouched, unedited raw file. And you can see uh, where we started from with all these mix of various colors and things like that. And if I press the backslash key once again, we've got here this final version with our more yellow and blue, nice, soothing night scene. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found it enjoyable and informative and that you'll give these techniques a go on your own images and see how you can make color work for you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.